What's up, guys? You can check out our podcast, articles, or our full proxy gallery all at our brand new website, www.itresolvesmtg.com. What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the crack a pack series today we are opening up a pack of corset 2019 uh, obviously not the latest installment in the corset but the one just before that and I have a lot of really cool cards in this set if I'm going to be honest uh, some really really cool stuff so hopefully we get to see that as we go through uh, we are of course going to draft uh, as we go through this and hopefully be able to figure out what our pack one pick one will be. Uh, do keep in mind this is a core set. Uh, generally speaking, the power level is a little bit dimmed down, uh, and so it might be a little bit of a quicker episode, but uh, still really, really fun. Lots of cool stuff in here. So, Scholar of the Stars is our first card. It is a 3-2 for 3 and a blue. When it enters the battlefield, if you control an artifact, you do draw a card. Uh, having drafted a good bit of this set, I will go ahead and say this card I found to be very underwhelming. Uh, I thought it would be good because it, generally speaking, goes into the white-blue kind of artifact theme deck. Uh, it's very easy, I would think, uh, to continuously have, you know, at least one artifact on the field. And it, if you draft the right cards, it certainly is. Uh, however, there were a lot of instances where I would draw this, not necessarily have an artifact out, uh, and then just have to play it as a 4-mana 3-2, which feels really, really bad. Uh, obviously, if you can draw a card off of it, the value is there. If not, though, it tends not to be, and so it's definitely not a flagship card in my mind, not something I'm super interested in, unless I have that high artifact count already. Uh, Tormenting Voice is a sorcery for one and a red. Uh, as an additional cost to cast it, you do discard a card, and then it is uh, just very simply you draw two cards. Uh, this is perfectly fine, actually, in a like red deck wins uh, or very aggro-focused deck, because a lot of times you don't need to play out tons and tons of your lands in those decks. Uh, you can kind of sandbag them, hold them for a Tormenting Voice or something like that if you know you've got it in your deck. Uh, and in that case, it's actually really nice to just draw two cards off of discarding a land. Perfectly fine. Hopefully going to give you another play for that turn. It's not an amazing card, definitely not a first pick, but uh, it is very, very playable, especially in a core set where, again, that power level tends to be a little bit lower. Uh, not a first pick, though, like I said, so definitely going to pass on it here. Uh, Dwarven Priest is three and a white for a 2-4. When it enters the battlefield, you gain one life for each creature that you control. So uh, there is a black-white kind of life gain uh, strategy in this set. Very, very powerful. I tend to have, uh, or when I was drafting this set, I, I, I was having good luck with that. Uh, I found that this card was perfectly good in that deck. It's not always amazing, but that extra life gain can mean the difference between you losing out to like an aggro deck. Uh, or, you know, staying in the game long enough to be able to, to swing the tides in your favor. So, so far, I actually like this card the best. It's definitely not the most powerful uh, and certainly not something I'm looking to first pick, but I do think so far it's the best card. Uh, Talons of Wildwood is one in a green for an enchant creature. Uh, the enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has trample, and then you can pay two in a green, return it from the graveyard to your hand. Uh, this gets around the big issue that I have with enchant creatures, which is that you tend to often open yourself up to two for ones. Uh, if you destroy the creature that the enchanted creature has uh, been placed on, the opponent's getting two for one value. They're dealing with two cards for the price of only one, and that's generally not a good place to be in. However, when you can return either the creature or the enchant creature back to your hand, kind of alleviates that issue. Uh, yes, you do have to pay a little bit of extra mana, but you can do it at any time. And so generally you'll find a place where it's going to be useful. The big thing here is that this this does give trample. Uh, the power and toughness boost, great as well, but the trample is really the key. You throw this onto a big bomb uh, and you're probably going to be able to end the game fairly quickly. So I actually like this card more than generally speaking for enchant creatures. Uh, however, I still like the priest a little bit better. Um, this is good. Not amazing. That's all I will say. <clears throat> uh, Duress is a sorcery for one black. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it, and that player discards that card. Uh, hand destruction is always really, really good. However, this does not hit creatures, and that's a big problem. Uh, creatures are the big, big thing in Limited. Uh, generally speaking, they're going to be what wins the game. They're going to be the majority of the opponent's deck. 
you may hit with duress, but it's probably not going to be the game ending card that you're wanting it to be. And so uh, I tend to shy away from this unless maybe you find yourself up against some kind of control deck, in which case side it in after game one, side this in. But I don't think it's worth picking up uh, super early. Uh, Skeleton Archer is a 3-3 for 3 and a black. When it enters the battlefield, it deals 1 damage to any target. Uh, I think I like this better than the Priest. Uh, they kind of... A lot of the times I found myself playing these in the same deck, but the Skeleton Archer fits into more strategies, I will say, a little bit easier just because it's kind of good on its own. Uh, the Priest, you tend to want to hold back until you have a little bit more creature uh, focus on the field. Uh, and so I like the Archer. I think it's just a little bit more of a solid card. It is also a 3-3, so it's going to be dealing a little bit more damage. Dies a little bit easier too, but uh, I think it's worth it. Uh, Wall of Mist is a 0-5 Defender for one and a blue. I really don't like cards like this. Uh, they literally just stall the game. That's about it. It's not really worth it. Uh, a lot of times there are, you know, there's some kind of stall control deck uh, that comes out of the woodwork and this is the card for it, but it's not a reason to be in that deck. So definitely not a first pick in my opinion. Maybe you find yourself there later in the draft, but other than that, not worth it. Uh, Take Vengeance is a sorcery for one and a white. Destroy target tapped creature. Very simple card. Uh, this is a good card. You do find yourself in a position playing it where you're kind of in a losing position. If the if the creature's tapped, it's generally attacking uh, or it's using a very strong ability, which is not good for you. But uh, this does give you an answer for that, and I think that's worth it. Uh, I think it's better than the Skeleton Archer, though I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I do believe I would take it over the Skeleton Archer. The, generally speaking, I say lean towards the creature. However, when the creature's not super high value, uh, I prefer to go with the removal spell over it. So I think that's what I'm going to go with here for sure. <clears throat> Uh, Root Snare is an instant for one and a green. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. Basic fog effect and very, very bad and limited. Uh, f turbo fog decks work okay in Constructed. You, we've actually seen with Pioneer a lot of people doing turbo fog like Maze's End, uh, which is really fun and really silly, but in draft, it's very, very bad to run fog effects. Literally just stalls the game. It doesn't provide any game plan for you or the opponent. Uh, and so I, I don't love this. I tend to shy away from these as much as possible. <clears throat> oh, here we go. Electrify uh, is an instant for three and a red. Uh, it deals four damage to target creatures. So what's great about this is it's a little bit more flexible than Take Vengeance. One, it's instant speed. Two, the creature doesn't have to be tapped. Uh, yes, there is a limit to how much uh, you know damage you can deal to it, which does give you a little bit less flexibility in that regard, but it's generally speaking going to be able to deal with anything you need it to, uh, and a very, very powerful instant speed spell is a little bit better than a sorcery speed spell. So I would go over this uh, for sure. This is just a really solid spell. Uh, our first uncommon is Shield Mare. It's one and two whites for a 2-3. It can't be blocked by red creatures, and when it enters the battlefield or becomes the target of a spell or an ability an opponent controls, you gain three life. Uh, this is actually a really good card. Uh, generally speaking, it's a 2-3 three for three with some upside, which is always going to be good. Uh, however, it's obviously more of a sideboard card against red. You really, really want it there. Sorry that light went out, by the way. The battery died. Um, very good card, though. Definitely like it. Uh, not more than Electrify. It's not game ending, uh, which is really the only thing that's going to beat out like a solid removal spell. Uh, but it is still a very, very good card. Definitely one I would play if I find myself in a white deck. Uh, Nightmare's Thirst is an instant for one black. You gain one life and then target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the amount of life you've gained this turn. Uh, this is actually a really solid card, again, for that white uh, black life gain deck. Shield Mare we've seen, the Priest is also quite good in that deck. Uh, both of those gain you some life, and the idea is that because this only costs one black, you could probably play it on top of playing something else. Uh, and so you gain a little bit of life for the turn and then hopefully for only one mana can deal with something else. I tend to not pick this specific removal spell very highly, though, uh, solely because I don't know if I'm already in that deck or not. I'd much rather be very, very well established in that deck and then take this. Uh, it's a bit of a speculative pick otherwise. So I don't love it here. Uh, Electrify is just much more flexible, much more useful. <clears throat> 
Uh, Declare Dominance is a sorcery for three and two green. Target creature gets plus three, plus three until the end of the turn. And then all creatures able to block it this turn do so. Uh, also a really interesting card, not my favorite. Uh, it does give a pretty big boost, but it's sorcery speed. Uh, and so generally speaking, if you play this, your opponent has the option to deal with it right on the spot and that's not great. So I do like this. It's a very powerful play, but it's a very all in play. You have to be a little bit careful when you play something like this at sorcery speed. And then our rare, uh, is Israeth. Is Isareth the Awakener? I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, it's a 3-3 for 1 and 2 black. It does have Death Touch. Uh, and whenever it attacks, you can pay X. When you do, return target creature with converted mana cost X from your graveyard to the battlefield with a corpse counter on it. Uh, if that creature would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. Uh, this is just a really hard, uh, like, really, really good 3-mana spell. Uh, 1, it's a 3-3 three, three for 3. 2, it has Death Touch. 3... It brings a lot of stuff back from the graveyard, assuming you have the mana and the creatures in your graveyard to do it. So it's just giving extra value to all of your creatures. I have to be honest, this has to beat out Electrify. I really like Electrify, but uh, the Awakener is just way, way too good. Uh, it's a very, very solid card. Definitely something I'm interested in. I don't think we got a foil here. Nope. So... Very clear in my opinion, the Awakener has to be the pick. Uh, I do think Electrify is quite good as well though, so please let me know in the comment section if you disagree, but if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below, and then always please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content, but with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching guys, I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.